Think of the Congress as the giant. You cut the giant in half. That gives you bicameralism. Two chambers of Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate. One of the major reasons why we have two is to create an additional hurdle for passing a law. This was a finely wrought and deliberately difficult process because we wanted to make it hard for government to pass laws. As Madison said, it is true that certain good laws will never get through. On the other hand, it is more important to stop bad laws. Clearly, we ought to bring our attention to the issue of representation and equality between the states is untenable. Madison wanted to play off interests and time against each other. So we created the House of Representatives where people are nervous wrecks because they have to run for election every two years. And he created the Senate, which had six years, which made them uh, very sloth-like in terms of how they wanted to move. But Madison's plan has a hitch. Under my plan, members of both the House and the Senate will be chosen on the basis of population. The larger the state, the larger the delegation. It's only fair. No, it's only fair. I don't know. No. Figuring out how the members of Congress should be elected threatened to wreck the convention. So the framers did what legislators do when they can't agree. They referred the question to a committee. The man of the hour is as humble as his roots, a self-made Connecticut lawyer and consensus seeker. Roger Sherman crafts the compromise that saves the Constitution. The House has proportional representation. The bigger the state, the bigger the delegation. The Senate levels the playing field. Big state or small, each gets two senators. There are a tiny number of people in Wyoming. They have two senators. There were a huge number of people in California. They have two senators. That's just not justifiable. Just because there are some big states that have huge populations, they don't get to run roughshod over the rest of us. It was that, or the smaller states would not have accepted the Constitution. The larger states were forced to compromise. Do you think we've lost that art or skill of compromise today? Oh, absolutely. I think we're starting to put party over the people. Compromise doesn't happen because people love to compromise. They hate to compromise. Very few people step across the aisle, whether it be Republican or Democrat, and that's why there's a stalemate on many, many issues. The Constitution is about forcing compromise, and most people don't understand that, or if they do understand it, they don't actually like it. 